this our children's church right now. We're going to miss our, miss our children's church. And then our nursery, um, if there's visitors here, we've started with our nursery. As soon as you get here, you can take your babies, zero to three, three years old, um, to the kitchen back there, uh, the babies. And then children are kindergarten through sixth grade, I believe.
gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you. Father, it's broken, needful wanderers, needing your help. Father, that you've placed us in this, this building today, not by our want or by our desire, but Father, because you have led us here. Father, you've put something within us that has made us desire to come in the presence of your people. <coughs> Father, in your presence that where two or three are gathered in one accord, you are with them. And Father, I just ask you that you would truly show us in your word today that you're here to help, that you're here to heal. And Father, that we can come to you how we are exactly right now, and that you'll love us. Father, we praise you, we honor you, and we just lift you up in this place today. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, this week as I was studying, I read through a passage of Scripture that God opened my eyes to see it in a way that I've never seen it before. And when I read through this passage of Scripture, it, it kind of convinced me of something. That... Some people, some of us, have a difficult time of accepting others because not that there's something wrong with the other person, but that we have a hard time accepting who we are. Amen. Sometimes we feel unworthy. Sometimes we feel like if we could just merely skim through the back of church or through an unforeseen <coughs> spot in the church, we can we can just we can drift in and we can drift out without being really touched, really ministered to, really having our hearts opened and, and having God just show Himself to us in a way that, that we have never really seen God before. And, 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 and when I was praying this past week and I read through this passage of Scripture, it just it blew my mind of what was really going on. And, 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 and you know, it, it took me to a, a, a place in Psalms and I love the book of Psalms and... and, and uh, it, it speaks so many different things and so many different levels to us. And, and I read through this passage of Scripture uh, in Psalm 57. You don't have to turn there if you don't want. We're going to be in Luke here in a minute. It says, He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame him who tramples on me. God will send out steadfast love and His faithfulness. Now think about that for a second. As it says that God will send, he will, he will send those that will save me, those that will take care of me, that God's going to send that message that, that from heaven and, and put to shame those things that are against me. And so this past week as I was reading through the book of Luke in chapter 8, uh, and it's in, it's in all these Gospels, is there's this woman in, in verses 43 through 48 that she would went for 12 years 12 years she had a, an issue with blood and she went to every physician, every healer, every person that said that they could do something for her, that she went and spent every dime that she had to try to be healed. And she heard this message about Jesus Christ, about this man that was coming, that, that as he went from city to city, and as he went from village to village and place to place, that people were getting healed and people were getting saved and things were happening in people's lives that was unimaginable. And she thought, for 12 years I've spent everything that I've had on things of this world that said that they can make me better, things that could to improve my life, things that could take care of me, these miraculous healers that said they could do things. For 12 years I've went and I've given myself to these people and nothing has happened. But here comes one of Jesus that said that He could heal me. And she thought, you know what, I'm unworthy. I'm not deserving of His healing. And, and I'm not even deserving to go and to look Him face to face. And if I could just merely touch the hem of His garment, that when I touched His garment, I would be healed. And so as she come through, this, as Jesus come through the city, is that she put it into her heart. You know what, if I could just make my way through the crowds of people and touch the hem of His garment, everything would be made fine. Amen. That's how you've heard the story. She made her way through the crowds of people. She touched the hem of his garment and she was healed immediately. Mm -hmm. That's not how I read the story this time. 
Kyle read the story this time is that when she made her way through the crowds of people, is Jesus. He knew that she was there when he touched, she touched the hem of his garment, that he said a virtue had come out of him and into her, and that immediately she was healed. And she just merely slipped in, touched the hem of his garment, and merely slept out. And so often we do the same thing in churches. We merely slip in and we merely slip out. It's so that, that when, when the presence of God is here, we want just that little piece of what He is and then we want to slip back out. But what's left? There was something that she was forgetting. There was something that she didn't even, even know about Jesus. The message title this morning is I'm Accepted. Come as you are. The lyrics of the song that Whitney just sang, I printed out for my message today. I asked her if she would sing this, and, and, and I printed these out. It says, Come out of sadness from wherever you have been. Come out of sadness, no matter where you've been. Come out of sadness wherever you've been. Come brokenhearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, O oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Amen. Amen. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home. You're not too far. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart. Come as you are. Amen. There's hope for the hopeless and all those who've strayed. Come sit at the table. Come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary, rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure. Amen. Come as you are. Fall in His arms. Come as you are. There's joy for the morning. O oh, sinner, be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. This passage of Scripture that we're talking about is I'm accepted. Is when Jesus felt that virtue leave out of His body into this person. Is it said the crowds pressed upon him? There was multiple peoples around him. There was just, I mean, it would be like me. <laughs> Y'all gonna have to wake up here in a minute. <laughs> It'd be like me coming up in here, walking this aisle right here, and saying, Who touched me? Who touched me? <laughs> now, how many of y'all touched me? <laughs> Every one of y'all. <laughs> Jesus, he went, he was going through the crowds of people, and he said, Who touched me? He didn't want to know who touched him because that virtue had left him. He wanted to know who touched him to know that he could tell them, you are accepted. Amen. I love you. Amen. You are healed because of my grace. You are healed because of my power. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, I love you for who you are. Amen. And when I read, that gives me chill bumps. When I read through that passage of Scripture to see that Jesus, He accepted them for who they were, who she was. It didn't matter that she went and spent everything that she had for 12 years looking into the, in the wrong places like an old country song. Looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> Looking for love. <laughs> Man. She had been everywhere looking for this healing. And when she seen Jesus, she said, if I could just merely touch the hem of His garment, I can slip in through the crowds of people and I can slip out. Now get it. Get this. We all have been to that position in our lives that we just merely want to slip into church. We want to slip out of church. We just merely want to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. But what He really wants to do is He wants to look you in the face and tell you you are accepted. Amen. Amen. <coughs> wow. In Romans 5.8 it says, While we were yet sinners, before I even knew God, or knew I needed God, in my life, it, it, Jesus died for me before I even knew that these things were even possible. That Jesus, that everything that He did, He did for me because He wanted me to know that He loved me. Amen. He wanted to heal me. He wanted to have a personal relationship with me. He didn't just want to know who touched Him. He wanted to let them know that He loved them and that He wanted to have a relationship with them and that they were accepted for who they was no matter where they'd been. Maybe... Maybe not really getting what I'm saying. Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted. Let rescue begin. 
Amen. This woman needed to be rescued. This woman not only needed to be healed from her issue of blood, but she needed to be rescued from the bondage that she had been in. It's just living life without Jesus, looking all of these other places to find this healing that she couldn't get. And when she had it right in front of her, and she heard of this Jesus, she pressed through the crowds, and then she touched the hem of His garment, didn't feel worthy to be even to look Him face to face, and she slipped away. And as Jesus said, Who touched me? She said, I did. I did. I guess my question is from this passage of Scripture. Is have you really slipped in? Have you really grabbed Jesus and said, I'm accepted? There's a myth that a lot of people, a lot of churches have, have put into practice. And this will not be put into practice in this church ever. There's churches that go out and they look for a certain group of people. They have a, a ministry to reach those of, of uh, dynasty names, of big names and big money in the community so they can be a church that succeeds. And then there's churches that their main goal is to reach teenagers because they are the church of tomorrow. Where our goal of Journey Church is to reach everybody because the Bible says that Jesus came and died for all who would say Amen. that there would be saved, all that would confess His name, that Jesus did it for every single person. Amen. The teenagers ain't the church of tomorrow. The teenagers are the church of today. Amen. The church of tomorrow has not been born yet. Jesus, He wants everyone to come into His, His place and to have a part. He wants that person that, that, that has been shifted away, that person that has been pushed away, that person that has been uh, left at, uh, alone, is that He wants them to be a part of His church. I don't care how much money you have or how much money you don't have. God wants you how you are. Amen. In this myth that I was talking about, it says, I've got to clean my act up before I can come to God. I've got to change some things in my life. I've got to get some things right. There are a few things I've got to get right in my life first and then I'll, I'll come to God. No. That is not correct. That woman, she tried for 12 years to get something right in her life. She tried and she spent every dime she had to get it right. And then when she finally decided, you know what, I will go to Jesus. I will go to Him that, that if I can just merely touch His garment that I'll be healed. And she had it figured out that she could go to Jesus. Turn with me to Luke chapter 15. We've been going through the parables on Wednesday night about uh, the parables of Jesus, about what the kingdom of heaven is like and to. And it's, it's awesome because it's, if you really stop and you pay attention, is the kingdom of heaven is like and to is those that go and do the will of God. Amen. And the will of God is those things which He has commanded us to do, and to go and to teach and to make disciples. And one of the greatest stories that I love preaching about is, is found here in Luke 15, which there's several of them in this passage, in this, this chapter, but verses 11, where it starts, it said, And he said, There was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give to me the share of the property that is coming to me. And so he divided his property between them, and not many days later, the youngster son, the younger son, gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of those citizens of that country who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. And when he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything, but when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger? I will arise and go to my father. And I will say to him, Father, I have... What's that word? Sin. Sin. 
sinned. Hmm. Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. Now, think about that for a second. Is, is he thought in his mind is that he was not worthy. He was not worthy. He was not worthy to be one of his, even to be one of his father's servants or even a servant of his father's servants. He, he didn't even think he was good enough to go back to his father's house. But he said, you know what? It's worth a shot. It's worth a shot. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to go back to my father's house. I'm not even worthy to become a servant of a servant in my father's house. But you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. I have, I'm going to tell him that I've sinned against him. I've sinned against heaven. I've done wrong in his eyes. I've done wrong in the eyes of God. And I'm just going to go back to my father's house. And I'm, I'm just going to try. I'm going to try. I'm not worthy, but I'm going to try. You know, you, you, you see the similarity of this woman with the blood issue and, and this man right here is both of them had that mindset is I'm not worthy. You may be sitting here this, this afternoon and you may be thinking, you know what, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy for Jesus to forgive me. I might not be worthy of Jesus to heal me. I might not be worthy of God to speak to me or God to love me or me to even be loved by this congregation of people. I'm not worthy. But you know what? I want you to be encouraged today is that you are worthy. Amen. You are accepted. This man, he found himself traveling back to his father's house. Guess what? He just left eating with the slop of the pigs and he found himself traveling back to his father's house. You think it was just by happenstance that his father was standing out there looking for his son to return? No. No. Do you think it's just by happenstance that you're sitting in this place today? No. God has a purpose for you in your life right now. Amen. God has a plan for you where you're at right now. But it takes one thing to make that possible. This woman, she decided, you know what, if I would just press through the crowds of people and touch the hem of his garments, I'll be healed. This, this guy, this son, he had that same similarity. He said, you know what, if I would just return to my father's house and tell him, you know what, I've sinned against you. Can I just be a servant of a servant? You know, the two similarities these people had in common with one another is they took the first step Amen. to go back, to go toward, to enter to Jesus where he was at, to go back to their father's house. Is they took that one step. They, 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 they made the effort to go back to where he was at. That's the thing is. There's a lot of Christians that, they, that we get the mentality of where did God go? Things are crumbling in my life. Things aren't happening how they used to. Where did God go? And it's not that God went anywhere. He is still here waiting for you to return to His bosom that He can look at you and say, You are accepted. You are mine. I love you how you are right now. Come. Amen. You know, Peter, when he was preaching, he was preaching that Jesus saves. He was preaching to believe in Jesus Christ and trust in Him with your life and that He will turn, he will turn a, a page in your life that, that everything that in life that you need will be provided by you by the riches of Christ Jesus. That all you have to do is take that step toward Him. You know, as He was preaching this, is these Pharisees and these Sadducees, they started saying, well, you, you, you know, they started to try to feed in to this Jesus, but then they started making rules and regulations of what it meant to be a part of the church. You've got to do this or you've got to do that. And you know, one of the greatest things that Peter ever said to them is you hard-hearted, stiff-necked people. Whoa. Yeah. Could you imagine somebody looking at you and saying, you hard-hearted, stiff-necked person, open your eyes and see Jesus. Whoa. Nowadays, we have such freedom as we'd say, you know, forget you, I'm going home. <laughs> yeah. But Peter didn't do it out of hate. He didn't do it out of despite. He did it to get their attention so they would see who Jesus is. Amen. These two people had something in common is that they took the first step to go back 
to where God was, to go back to where Jesus was, to work their th way through the crowds of people, is it didn't matter. <laughs> you know, when I walked down that aisle just a while ago, how many of y'all did I make uncomfortable by putting my, my rear in your face? <laughs> yeah. That's just like, yeah. James, James is like, yeah. Yeah, I didn't like that either, brother. <laughs> Let me do it again. <laughs> She didn't care who she made uncomfortable. She didn't care who she had to move out of the way. Is that she made her way through the crowds of people to get to Jesus. What are you willing to do to get to Jesus? Are you willing to wait, uh, to, to wait for the crowds to disperse? Are you willing to make your way through the crowds of people and say, Jesus, I'm here. I need your help. I want you to do something in my life. I need you to do this. That woman had something specific in mind. She needed to be healed. Amen. What do you need? As his son left feeding the swine, the hogs, slop, and he made his way back to his father's house, his father was watching. And it said as his father seen him, he, he made uh, leaps and bounds. He run to his son and he wrapped him up. And you know what? When he wrapped him up, you can just imagine this man crying and just crying tears of joy. And he looks at his son and he said that you have returned. You was once dead and now you're alive. You were once lost and now you are found. And he told his servants, he said, go get a robe and a ring and put it back on my son for he is back. Amen. You know, his son, he just went to be a servant of a servant. And his father said, we're not going to have that. You are my son. You're my child. You are mine. Amen. You know, when Jesus died on the cross and, and, and He rose from the grave and He ascended into the heavens to be at the right hand of the throne of the Father, it says that He even makes intercessory prayer for you because you don't even know what to pray for about yourself sometimes. Amen. Our brains can't even fathom the needs that we have. And Jesus is up there before the Father saying, Father, I need you to do this work in my people's lives. You know, as, as the father put a, a robe of royalty and a ring of royalty back on his son, is that he told his servants to go get uh, and, and, uh, the lamb, the, the fatted calf, and prepare a feast, a party, because we're fixing a party because my son's home. Amen. You know, one of my favorite things to tell is somebody that has just received Jesus Christ. Is once they have accepted Christ as their Savior and they confess and believe in their heart. And I tell them, I love telling them this, especially a child. Because I'm telling you what, children, man, I think sometimes they got it more figured out than we do. They know, the, they know exactly the difference between right and wrong. They know the difference between a good person and a bad person. There's no gray area with them. It's white or black. They just know. And when you tell them that, because of the decision you made today, all the angels in heaven are rejoicing and singing praises to the Father because of what you did. Amen. One person, one single person that the angels in heaven rejoice and praise God because of one person. Yeah. Could you imagine when you come back to the Father and you put one foot out and you start walking toward God and He sees that you're coming toward Him. He sees where your heart is. He sees what your motivation is. And He takes leaps and bounds to you. Could you imagine what that does to the heavens? It says the things that we loose in heaven, we loose on earth. And the things that we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. If you loose God on earth, what is being loosed in heaven? God. If you bind sin on earth, what is being bound in heaven? Sin. Amen. We've got to bind those things up and loose the things that God wants us to loose. And that's going back to Jesus. Amen. They threw a feast apart. They enjoyed themselves. The woman was healed. Wow. Turn with me to Romans chapter 10. I'm going to read verse 9. Start with 9. 
It says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the Scripture says, everyone who believes in Him will not be put to shame. For there is a distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing His riches on all who call Him. For everyone calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Yeah. doesn't mean change how you're living. Stop doing what you're doing. It says if you call upon the name of the Lord, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, thou shalt be saved. It is, there's, no, there's no gray area. It's black or white. You either love God or you hate God. You're either for Him or you're against Him. It's not one or the other. It's, it's hot or cold. Look yeah. warm and He'll spew you out of His mouth. <laughs> Praise God. They're excited. Right. I wish y'all got that excitement. Quick, <laughs> bring the best roll and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger, sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And so they begin to celebrate. Jesus has accepted you. He loves you just the way you are. He waits for you to accept Him and by receiving Him in your life. He, he, just wants, he just wants you to take that one step. Are you willing to take that one step? Are you willing to take that direction that if you would just press through the crowd of people up to Jesus? You know, so often as we have a hard time even getting out of our seat, getting out of our seat, Grabbing somebody by the hand. <laughs> and take them to the altar to pray. I've got a hot heart with that. Wasn't hard for me a bit. <laughs> you know, and just love them. Show them some love. Show them some compassion. You know, I love this girl. You love me? Alright. <laughs> you know, it's so hard for us to do that sometimes, but the results are so magnificent is that we are healed, that we have returned to our Father. We have been a robe wrapped around us, a ring put on our finger. These are the results returning to God. Amen. When's the last time that you went to Jesus? When's the last time that you took somebody to the altars? When's the last time that you put your arm around somebody and said, I love you? When's the last time that you become a friend? One of my most favorite passages of Scripture that John writes, and it says in verse 1 and 12, it says, Yet to all who receive Him, to those who believe in His name, He gave them the right to become children of God. Now get that. He gave them the right to become children of God. You didn't earn it. You didn't pay for it. There's nothing you can do to deserve it. He gives you the right to be His child. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to share it? Some of us are going to take that right. And we're going to merely slip in, touch the hem of the garment, and we're going to try to slip out. Some of us are going to take that right. And we're going to take the riches of God. And we're going to go into this world and we're going to live a wild life. Even knowing that my God can make a difference, even knowing that He has given us the riches of His kingdom, we're going to live wildly and not make a difference. In the book of Job, it says, there are those who have compassion and make a difference. I like how he describes the rest. There are those who have compassion and make a difference, and then there are others. Amen. That's it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> There are those who have compassion to make a difference. Are you one of those that has compassion to make a difference? You say, I'm a tough man. I don't have compassion. Well, I'll tell you one that can soften the heart. That's Jesus. You want to talk about a tough man? It's one that was nailed to a cross. One that was jabbed in the side. One that surrendered for you. Amen. That's a tough man. What are you going to do with these riches? 
Are you going to have compassion to make a difference? Or are you going to be less than others? Be one of those that... I've been there, so I can, I can tell you how this works. But you're sitting over here on the sideline, and you're saying, well, why is everything working out for, for that person? I'm as good as they are. I do things, they, I've seen them do bad stuff in their life. I'm as good as they are. Why is everything working out for them? Because <laughs> maybe that person has repented to God. Maybe that person has found themselves kneeling before Jesus Christ at, at, at His altars, surrendering, saying, God, here I am. How can you use me? Amen. Last week we talked about priorities. We talked about that Jesus proposing to His bride and that He has given us His life. He has given us His love. He loves us with a passion. Today we talked about being accepted. What is the church going to do with what God has placed right in front of you? There's people throughout this county and further even than that that need you. When I say they need you, they, they need you because you are Christ's representatives. You are royal ambassadors. You are, you are the representative of Jesus Christ when you walk in the world that your light shines before them that God may be glorified. Amen. And if our lives, if we don't go out into this world and accept people for how they are, guess what? God loves them no matter what they look like, talk like, how they're dressed, what they smell like. God loves them how they are. Amen. And so should we. What are you going to do? There may be sitting, sitting in here right now that, man, they really, really need you to step up. Step out. And drag them through the crowds of people back to Jesus. Are you willing? Are you willing? You say, oh, brother, hey, maybe next time. You know, it's, there's, there's, there's a lot of people in here. And they might think I have a real problem in my life if I go back up there to the altars. But you know what? You do have a big problem. And so do I. And so does he. So does she. So does he. And so does every other person in this room. they got a big problem. And because of that problem, every one of us needs Jesus. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. <coughs> Come out of sadness from whenever you are. Come broken hearted. Let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, O sinner. Come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. O oh, wanderer, come home, you're not too far. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, and come as you are. Will you come? Will you come to Jesus? Will you come to His presence? Will you come and touch the hem of His garment and be accepted for how you are right now? There's hope for the hopeless and all the who's strayed. Come sit at the table. Come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary, rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure. Come as you are. Fall in His arms. Come as you are. There's joy for the morning. O oh, sinner, be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. I'm going to ask you, are you ready? Are you ready to come as you are to give your life to Christ? Are you ready to surrender that, that life that God has given you? Are you ready? There's nothing you have to change about yourself. There's nothing that He can't take. There's nothing that He will not do for you. He loves you how you are. I'm going to ask you to join me at the altar. 
If you've got somebody on your mind, to go grab them by the hand and take them to the altar and pray with them. Jesus. 
of the Holy Spirit, God. And you push back. You say, whoa. So when the Holy Spirit starts working on you, you've got the all built. And you can't feel it. You can't hear it. It's muffled. And you say, whoa, not for me. I hope you don't leave here today with that wall built. Allow God to start tearing that wall down. Because like I said, family, friends, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God, all of those are trying to get to you, to love you. Amen. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you to come up up here and help me with this. I'm going to ask you to stand. You know the words to it. You sing it. You don't know the words to it. Just hum. Watermelon can a little bit.
you first. 